Hello YouTube and uh I'm back and uh yeah so if you guys are probably wondering why I haven't I did not post on Sunday. Mondays I've not been feeling well, um but I'm feeling better a bit, so I just wanna make a video and uh yeah, so today we're talking about the M1 Garand, which is a famous rifle that a lot of people know. As you know, the M1 Garand was the standard U.S. infantry rifle in World War II and was used by many other countries after World War II. Uh, the M1 Garand was a semi-automatic battle rifle, so basically, at the time, you know, there were most countries, well, matter of fact, all countries, um, used bolt-action rifles as their standard infantry. Now, I'm not saying that the U.S. was the only country to, um... <coughs> have semi-automatic? No. But it was the only country to have it as a basic infantry rifle. For example, yes, I know Germany had a semi-automatic rifle, the Soviets did. I know that. I'm just talking that it was the first one to have an infantry. Uh, of course, it was made in the United States, and America pretty much started to look at bolt-action rifles pretty much after World War II, um, World War One, I, I meant. And, you know, prior to that, uh, the U.S. was using the Springfield uh, 1903, that was its basic infantry rifle, bolt action, uh, but America wanted to go straight to the future, so they basically asked everybody, you know, people who were crafted and gun marks, you know, making guns, to make a design and Springfield Armory will, you know, test it. But one man stood off particular, and if you guys are wondering what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the script, so, yeah. One man, uh, stood out. His name was John C. Garant. He was a Canadian-American who, um, Springfield Armory had recognized because, uh, in World War One, he actually submitted a machine gun design that was declined, but, uh, the M1 Garand is, uh, yeah, he made that, it was, he made that, and he, he basically, he built it, he sent it to Springfield Armory, and it was designed in 1928, and, um, now, of course, weapons don't just take overnight to review this, you know, months, years sometimes of just training and debating, and until 1937, in 1937, the weapon was officially labeled as the U.S. main, like the main U.S. infantry weapon. <coughs> um, it was produced from 1936 to 1957, so uh, a good 21 years, which uh, one of the longer uh, U.S. infantry weapons, I guess you could um, say. Of course, the cartridge was 30-06. Uh, which, uh, 30 out 6, which was the standard U.S. round since, uh, 1890s, you know, was, um, and the reason why they did this is the U.S. wants to have, you know, most of their guns or rifles, um, have that round, you know, because the Springfield had that, um, around the infield 1917 had that, uh, round, so it was kind of easier, I guess, to make them, so you're not making different ones. Uh, of course, semi-automatic, you can't change the function, you can't go full auto, that's not what uh, that's, rifles had, you know, there were really, were no full, full auto rifles, except the STG-44 and some others. It held eight rounds, and it wasn't a mag, it actually was a, um, a system, it was a block, an uh, M-block clip, which is internal, the magazine was inside. So after you fired the eight shots, and it would do a ping, which is so iconic, I'm not even going to, to, the ping, um, the ping would just basically signal that you need to put another clip in. <coughs> the rifle was, uh, about 43 inches, about 43.5 inches long, with the barrel being 24, so, uh, it's it's longer it's longer than some rifles that the U.S. had in the past, and through its 21 years being in production, about 6.2 6.25 million were built, which is really remarkable. You know, iron sights, 
uh, and its effective range was 457 meters, 500 yards. <coughs> and uh, even today, you can still find it in some other countries' military. It was used uh, in our militaries. It was given especially to the South Vietnamese in um, you know Vietnam War. Uh, you can attach grenades to it. Um, you know, you know, grenade launchers. I meant not physical grenades. You could call it any World at War fans. You know what I'm talking about. And they also had sniper versions, which um, obviously the Elmond Grand wasn't the you know ish standard issue sniper rifle. It was the Springfield 1903. But it, but um, you know you could still use it. It was called the M1D and M1C, both same cal. Um, caliber thing was different is the scope instead of being you know, in the center like we see most sniper rifles actually on the side because as you remember the ping ejects up and with a scope in the way that would be physically um, impossible or very hard and uh, yeah it was uh, used until 1957 used in Korea and then it was replaced by the M14 but as I said it was you know given to the South Vietnamese and uh, many other countries military uh, many, you know, brave Americans died while holding this weapon, and uh, it's very iconic and really led the wave to what we know now. So, uh, 1957, it was succeeded by the M14 and uh, had a ni nice long life. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Pro I'll be posting tomorrow too, so keep an eye out. Bye.